Hello, I'm Dr. Ruggiero. We're going to walk through the steps of placing a central line. Um, so I have my central line kit. Uh, I would be using ultrasound um, for ultrasound, gui gu ultrasound guided uh, uh, central line placement. There are three principal locations that we use for central lines, uh, the internal jugular vein, the subclavian vein, or the femoral vein. You can also um, uh, have for less emergent um, conditions, uh, a patient may have a pick line pace placed, which is a peripherally inserted central catheter, and that goes through the brachial vein, but with the tip uh, still above the atria. So I open my central line kit. Um, I would be putting on, um, I, I would be placing the sterile drape on the patient. Um, I would be placing a sterile, sterile gown, and I wouldn't be using nitrile gloves. I would have sterile um, gloves in place. I open my central line kit. I'm going to um, go ahead and place the equipment here. And I take out, I'm, I'm going to, I usually keep things in the tray until I need them, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and take things out so that you see what we're doing. So we're going to start by uh, uh, using chloroprep uh, to clean the skin. Um, we would then, uh, if the patient was awake um, and uh, uh, conscious, uh, we might be using lidocaine as well. Then the first thing I'm going to do is have my introducer needle, which is a large gauge um, uh, uh, needle. So I'm going to have my introducer needle. At the end, I'm going to explain how instead of using an introducer needle, there's also the option of using a catheter um, to place the central line. And the technique is just a little bit different. Uh, I will then advance the guide wire I'll then make a nick in the skin. The triangular shaped um, uh, scalpels are number 11 scalpels, so I'll make a nick in the skin. I'll advance the um, dilator. After the dilator um, has created a track for the catheter to go through, um, I'll then uh, remove the dilator, the wire is still in place, and I'll uh, thread the catheter over the wire. One thing I'll ask you about this central line um, that I like to ask students is, would you believe me if all three of these were the same length? If they all empty from the um, tip here, uh, obviously that would not be the case. But if you look very closely, um, there are ports um, uh, here where the other uh, two catheter lumens um, uh, drain from. I'm going to remove, because I'll be threading the wire through there and I want the wire to come out, um, I'll be removing the port that's closest, that's that tip. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that um, cover. Um, and then after the catheter is in place, I'm going to uh, uh, use some additional uh, catheter locks there. All right, uh, the other thing I wanna point out here is that the difference th um, here, these are both to protect your sharps after you use them. It, however, this one locks the needle. So if you, are, uh, if you place a needle in this uh, needle holder, it's going to clamp and you will not be able to reuse that needle. So make sure you don't use this unless you know you're done with that needle. And then the last thing that you would do is you would suture, and there are different sutures that might come in the kits. There are also staples, but you would suture uh, the catheter in place. So let's see what, that, what this looks like. Um, I'm going to use this as my high fidelity mannequin here. And so we're going to go ahead and place this here. I've prepped the skin. Um, I have anesthetized with lidocaine. Uh, one thing I want to point out about this syringe is if you look very closely, there's a needle tube through the syringe and there's a hole there. Um, and so the and I'll explain to you, to you the idea of that for when we're advancing the needle, but just to make a note. So I'm going to pierce the skin. I'm going to start aspirating as I advance the needle. And once I hit, for example, the internal jugular vein, then this is going to fill with blood very easily. I now know that the tip of the needle is in the internal jugular vein. So what I'll then do, and I'll, um, I'll remove this cap from the wire, I'll pull this back, and I'll advance the wire through here. Another option, if you don't have one of these syringes that has that uh, uh, push-through mechanism like that, is brace your hand with the ulnar aspect on the patient's body so that you're not moving the needle. Disconnect the, um, uh, disconnect the syringe, and you can also advance directly um, from there. But the idea be behind this innovation is that um, 
you don't have to worry about accidentally losing with the needle tip in the vein by having this kind of motion trying to separate the syringe. Um, so that's the reason why um, these are like that. So I'm holding this like a trigger. I'm advancing the um, wire. If I meet any resistance, I do not push forcefully. Um, I continue to advance the wire. I don't have to advance it all the, the way. It's only um, a few centimeters uh, where the vein is. And recall that I'm going to have to pass this catheter through the wire. So I can have a significant amount of the wire still out of the patient's body. I'm now going to remove the, um, I'm going to remove the uh, uh, syringe. I'm always keeping control of the wire. Um, it's not going to get sucked into the patient, but what students or residents might do by accident is push the wire in if they don't always have control um, uh, of a portion of the wire. So I've removed my, I've removed my needle. I'm now going to make a nick in the skin. I'm gonna have the blade facing up and I just make a small nick just to help the, uh, um, the dilator go through. Um, I wanna make sure that I don't have a little skin bridge, so that's why I rotate it like that and I don't see a skin bridge. I'm now going to advance um, the dilator. When I advance the dilator, especially if this is the first time that you're doing the central line, you're going to be nervous and tremulous. A surgeon's trick is to brace your hands um, to, re to reduce that tremulousness. And so I'm now going to dilate um, a channel uh, to advance the, ca the catheter. So the way that I do this is I don't just push this forward and push the wire forward. I hold on to the wire and, um, and I do left and right kind of twists of the skin. As I advance, I can pull back, advance, um, and I keep going. If I meet resistance, um, I check to see if I can move the wire. If there's still good movement of the wire, it's okay um, to advance with that twisting motion. If I can't uh, move the wire easily back and forth, then it might mean that um, it's up against the uh, vessel wall. And so I might want to pull back and adjust my angle a little bit. But um, I'm not meeting any resistance, so I'm going ahead and moving forward with the dilator. So now it's dilated, I'm going to remove this. Now you're going to have a little pool of blood um, because uh, you've uh, made a larger opening. And now it's time to advance the catheter. Again, I've removed that um, bottom kit. So, uh, so when um, a wire is accidentally pushed into a patient's, um, when the wire is accidentally pushed into the patient's body and requires a vascular surgeon to, um, and requires a vascular surgeon to fish it out, this is usually the step where that happens because instead of waiting until I have control of the wire and I'm holding it here, some people start to advance the catheter and they end up pushing the wire into the patient's body. So I'm not going to advance this catheter until I have control of the wire. And so I bring this back and now the wires here, I have control of the wire. So now I can advance the catheter. So I'm going to go ahead and advance the catheter. And now that the catheter is advanced, I'm going to remove the wire. You're going to see a little bit of blood coming up this way. Uh, nurses will hand you new caps um, that are uh, needleless caps to put on these and will hand you saline flushes. You'll aspirate the air out of the line and then flush the line with saline. And you'll do that with all three of them. These are the additional anchors here. This is a soft anchor. This is a hard plastic. You get the soft one, you put it um, below um, these other anchors that are uh, built in. Then I put the blue one on top of the white one. And then I'm going to suture those in place. Um, and so uh, now we have placed our central line. I'm going to show you next the variation. And so this is just a, where everything is the same, except we're going to use this um, catheter um, instead of the uh, large introducer needle. So we're going to use a catheter. So again, we prep, we prep the skin. Um, we apply lidocaine um, if necessary. And now instead of using the introducer needle, I've got this catheter needle that I'm doing. I pierce the skin, I aspirate, and when I, the tip of the vessel, um, when the tip of the needle is in the blood vessel, uh, uh, whether internal jugular, subclavian, or femoral, um, this is going to fill with blood. Now, what I do, which is different, is I advance the catheter and then I remove the needle. 
So right now I have immediate IV access if I need it in an emergent situation. The other theory with using this is that the catheter is more likely to stay in place than if you're using the introducer needle where you're at a higher risk of the needle tip being uh, moved from within the vessel. So now that it's in uh, with the catheter, the idea is that it's there. There have been studies that have looked to see whether one technique is better than the other, um, and ultimately it boils down to uh, the most successful technique is the one that the individual has been trained uh, to do and uses the most often. Um, let me re, or let me get another wire from here show you now with the catheter. So you have to remove the needle from the catheter. This wire will not advance through the needle. And so now I place this here. I advance the, the wire through the catheter. And now that I've advanced it through, I can now remove the catheter because the wire is staying in place. And then I do all the same steps. I nick the skin, I dilate, and then I advance the catheter and secure it with the anchors. And so that is a quick tutorial um, on, the, uh, on how to use, uh, how, how to place a central line. Obviously there are many, many more details that you need to be familiar with, including indications and contraindications, uh, but this is just a general overview. Thank you.